Hey, what's up everyone? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm gonna to be showing you some quick tips to speed up your editing workflow. And what these really encompass, I guess, is keyboard shortcuts and utilizing your keyboard, your left hand, instead of your mouse. Because imagine how some people can type, I don't know, maybe 70 words per minute. Um, you know, people can type way faster than that, but maybe that's about the average. Every word, four or five letters a word on average. So in a minute, you can type, you know, 500, 600 different keys on your keyboard. Try to hit 600 accurate clicks on your mouse in one minute. You'll realize maybe you only get up to 100 accurate clicks or less in one minute. I mean, it's just so hard to move through menus, to jump around um, and click something so accurately with a mouse. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be speeding things up by just learning a couple keyboard shortcuts and how to edit our own shortcuts to actually, you know, move a lot of the work into our left hand, which can move so much faster than just clicking around. And so the first thing we're gonna do is just quickly learn how to create our own shortcuts. So in here, Adobe has created a really neat system over here to show you all of the shortcuts. So, you know, if you hold the control key, it shows you everything that's binded to control and then a letter. Control and shift, control, shift, alt. I mean, you can do any combination of it and it'll show you the binding keys and then what is beneath it. This is my layout. It's just a very slight difference than the Premiere Pro because I'm still building my layout. Um, what you want to do is you want to find an area of the keyboard that you're most comfortable with. I am being a gamer. I My left hand naturally rests on WASD area, so right here. So... Since it rests there, I like to put as many of the most useful tools around here as possible. And you'll realize, you'll be thinking, you know, like, oh, but I don't want to remove this tool or I don't want to remove that. If you use it all the time, don't remove it. I mean, it's, it's in a great place. Maybe you want to move it somewhere else. Maybe you want to keep it where you've always learned it. But if you've never clicked that key in your life, get rid of it and put a key that you will click. So, for example, I mean, you have, what, about nine options here. If you have cold control, you got about 18 more. I mean, you have uh, nine more, hold control shift, just hold shift. I mean, you have a ton that you can do in just these nine. And if you expand it to maybe like right around here, you have so many things to do. And I don't think you can find as many keys as you can bind to use here and then get really, really efficient at. So yeah, that's what we're going to be working with. Working with keyboard shortcuts, make sure to find the ones that you use the most and put them within an area that you like on the keyboard. So I'm going to go quickly back to my layout here. And then so the first one we're gonna do is a keyboard shortcut known as Add Edit. Now Add Edit usually is Control K or Command K. So Control K or Command K is how you do this. And what it does is it does this basically. So what you could normally do is if you wanted to add an edit, you could hit C or you could go click on the razor tool, then click the spot which it'll lock to here to click on so you know find it in the timeline click on the spot then click back on the V key and then now you can go back to your work three four clicks there what this does is I'm gonna hit control Z to go back another keyboard shortcut undo use it all the time but so now I can just click I have binded this to my Z so the Z key instead of control K because control K is really hard to hit from the left side you can go from the right side pretty easily but I like to keep everything on the left side so now that it's on Z I can just click Z and just you know add edits anywhere that I want reduces three or four clicks reduces a mouse movement you know you make 500 edits an hour imagine how much time you can save by just binding that to Z instead so much quicker so yeah, that's really, really important. The next one I like to do is jump two cuts. So what this means is to jump from one cut to the next cut to the next cut to the next cut. Because you're going to be making the most edits after you've created you know, footage and then made an edit. Your edit, your time is going to be spent on these edges because you've got the middle down and now you're just trying to kind of bring everything together. So to jump in between these, you can by default hit shift and then up and down arrow keys which will jump you back and forth. Or on my layout, you can hit the one and two keys. So you can see they jump all across this and it's like, oh, I wanna edit, you know, I, I think this was a little slow after I watched it. So right over here, right at the edit, at the exact point we need to be, and now we can make the edit that we want to. Next thing we wanna do is match frame. And match frame is really neat because, let's say we're at the end of this right here, and we want to see, like, oh, maybe we want to extend this a little bit, like right here. Maybe we want to extend this shot a little bit, so we could grab it and we could extend it, but we don't know what's over there anymore. So what we can actually do, um, let me get to a shot that actually has, yeah, so let's let's 
kill this a little bit. Um, there's also a tool for that, but I'm just gonna do this the basic way of click, drag, click, drag. Um, so yeah, there's this right here, and we wanna see what's past this. So if we click F, now this is a default binding, F, it's going to match the frame to our left and to our right. So we can now go into the source monitor and we can scroll around this file and do anything we, that we want to it and the edit will stay the same. So we can peek a little bit, you know, maybe what's in the future of this. And like, okay, that's pretty cool. You know, jump around, kind of figure it out. Really great tool, match frame. Otherwise, you're, you're, you know, you're trying to double click over here and then you're trying to match it up to the exact, I don't know, maybe time code or something. Really hard to do. So yeah, F is how you do that. Another feature, which is really, really neat, um, let's get this back to how it was, is match replace. So it goes one step further. So let's say we have a, I don't know, um, a beat drop right when this pillar passes for some reason. But we don't like that anymore. We wanna add in a beat drop right, I don't know, right when, right when that car passes. Yeah, that sounds accurate. Um, so we want to add it right here is where we want to change it and we've lined up over here where the other beat wants We want the other beat to go and so now we can use something that's called replace footage with Source monitor match frame really really long. I'll show you that in a second I binded it to three because it doesn't have a keyboard shortcut and I don't even know how to do it in the menus But yeah, so now if I click three it replaces this at this exact point keeps all the time codes so It's not gonna like push things out and so now it just assumes that all the footage beforehand was okay, and all we wanted to do was change that beat mark. Really, really neat to do when you're trying to make you know collage videos or even like music videos and stuff. If you want to find that, you just go into Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts, and then it's under Application, Clip, and then go down into Replace Clip With, and then From Source Monitor, right here. Oh, my bad. Source Monitor Match Frame. This will make sure that it matches the frame to what you're viewing right here. Really, really great tool. I just binded it to three up here because all these select cameras I don't use, so they're all kind of just open game for me. And finally, really simple, I guess, is just um, to swap clips. So if you hold control when you try to move a clip around, it's going to swap them. So now instead of, you know, now it goes here, here, and here. What's really neat about this is that since the time codes of each, so you know, like let's say we have a four here and a six here, they always equal 10. So we can perfectly swap them always. Um, move, you know, now we had a four, six, now we can move this around and now it's a six, four. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like that. So you can always perfectly swap them. But if, without understanding how to do this, you'd have to drag this up. I don't know, maybe drag it out like this, which I've done many times. Drag this under, click this over, drop it back in. A lot of work to do for something when you know, maybe you're trying to get a collab video going here and you're trying to move things into the right space, that can get a little annoying. So yeah, really cool, hold control, swap it around. You can swap clips just like that. It makes the clip swap and then um, make sure there's no gap when you do it. So yeah, that's just five really quick things to kind of speed up your Adobe workflow. Understanding which buttons you use the most is really, really helpful. Um, go ahead and bind those to the area of the keyboard you use the most and make it customized to you. That's the great thing about Adobe products is everything in here is customizable to you. Speed up your workflow, get to the point where you can edit at the speed of thought and you will really start to feel some creativity and some power in this program. Thanks everyone for joining me. Um, if you want to see more videos similar like this, you know, Adobe sort of videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you got any questions, post them in the comments below. And until next time, guys, see ya.